Hi, this is Ben with Tech Impact. Uh, we are going to be talking today about SharePoint Online permissions, how those work, specifically as an end user, what do I need to know about the way that SharePoint permissions are managed? But I'm going to hop over to the HR and Finance site. And this site is actually open to everyone in my organization. So my administrators, my, my manager, and our HR people, they were like, hey, we want to make some of these resources that we have available to everyone in the organization. So we have things in here like our benefits information, what different general human resources documentation we have. We have some general standard operating procedures in here for how we as Tech Impact work with our clients. So that's one way that permissions are handled. You have a site and it's probably inheriting permissions from the home site since the home site is open to everyone. So our HR and finance site is inheriting those permissions where it's open to the whole organization. There are definitely sites though as well where you're going to have what are called unique permissions that are locked down. They don't get their permissions from anywhere else. You're specifying just on that site who has access to the resources that are in that site. So under our HR and finance site, we have a restricted site. And this is locked down. I don't even have access, even though I'm a SharePoint administrator. So our administrators, again, set up the permissions specifically for that site to be different from this actual HR and finance site or from any of the other sites. Now, maybe I think that I should actually have access to that site or I sh should have access to a resource that I'm not seeing. Maybe you, you know, shoot an email, whoever manages those permissions for your SharePoint environment and you say, hey, would it be possible for me to be added to the site or to this other resource? Having a just open conversation about why you actually think you need access to that. Uh, maybe there's a, a very specific good reason that you have not been granted permission to that area of SharePoint. The other thing that you actually should be aware of, the only reason that I'm able to see this restricted site here is because I am a SharePoint administrator. So I see the link there. I don't have permissions to it though. And if I was a normal user, I actually wouldn't even see this drop down. So the other ways that we can kind of think about permissions are with our folders and files as well as the document libraries that house those folders and files. So technically, permissions are set at the site level, but they can also be set at the app level or the library level. So I could say that I only want three people to have access to the documents in this HR and finance site, but everyone in the organization should have access to everything else that's on that site. So I give everyone access to the whole site, but I only give three people access to the documents that we have in here. But technically your folders and files inherit their permissions from the library, which inherits its permissions from the site. You can break that inheritance at any of those levels, but it's really best practice to keep it up at the site level. So the reason that permissions exist is because as an organization, you're making decisions about who is gonna have access to what. When we share something here, it kind of breaks that decision. It breaks that inheritance from the library. Anyone who should have access to this folder should already have access to the folder. If they don't, then you want to just talk to your admin again and make sure that they have been given permissions if they should have permissions there. We can use this get a link option that we have right next to or in the same area and share this restricted link with someone. If the person has permissions to that folder or to that file already, they're just gonna click on this link and it's gonna take them right to the contents of that folder or to that file. If they don't have permissions, then you know they can let you know that and you can then again talk to your administrator. So that's a rundown for what you need to know as an end user. 